Hey everyone, welcome to another session of Sarazzle Dazzle Physics. In today's session, we're going to be talking about AC and DC generators. So, put down today's title, it's going to be AC and DC generators. Right, so before we start, make sure you've watched the following videos before doing this one. You've watched my video on the motor effect, my video on the DC motor, and you've watched my video on the generator effect. Watch those free before you do this video because it's all tied together. I don't think you can just skip a video and just get over here. Guys, you can't cheat the learning. Make sure you put the time in. Watch those videos before looking at this one. Right, so there are two types of generators. One of them is DC and one of them is AC. So DC means direct current. So that means the current goes in one direction only. So if you've forgotten, I've got a video on this. You can watch it. It's on my playlist. It's talking about AC and DC current. So Direct current, if I have a graph of voltage against time, it's usually going to go straight across. The current goes in the same direction. AC, if I have a graph of voltage against time, we can see that it will change direction over here. So there we go. DC, the current is in the same direction. The voltage always goes in the same direction. AC, the voltage will change direction here. Yeah, so there are two types of generators. One of them will produce DC voltage. The other one will produce AC voltage. So let's look at the construction of the DC generator. Right, so the DC generator, sometimes it's also known as the dynamo. So it's also known as a dynamo. So have a look, we have a bar magnet, a north and south. Now we have a square wire, so a square wire is placed within it. And obviously we have a field going from north to south over here. Happy days. Right, so north, south, and we have a square wire running in between it. Those two parts of the wire, as you can see, they're connected to a split ring commutator. A split ring commutator. Right, and the split ring commutator, yeah, a ring split into two. That's why it's called a split ring. They are connected to two carbon brushes. Two carbon brushes. The reason why we have the carbon brushes is so that when the coil rotates, the carbon brushes allow the split rings to rotate. So it allows the free rotation. Therefore, it doesn't get tangled up. Um, if you look at the DC motor, which we've done previously, it's roughly the same. There's roughly the same setup. The carbon brushes are connected with wires to the voltmeter. They're connected to the voltmeter here. As this is a generator, we know that we're going to have to move the wire within the field to induce a voltage. So we're going to take that square wire. We can see it's a square. We're going to move it within the field and it will generate a voltage here. So we're going to rotate it. So I'm going to draw an here we go, let's rotate. So we're going to rotate the square coil within the field and what will happen is you will generate a voltage. So we end up with a graph of the following. So it looks like this. So we have a voltage against time graph. Okay, right, so visualizing this, let's say this square is the same as that uh, purple square, which is the square coil. As it rotates, let's say from here, it makes half a turn, the voltage will look like this. It will go up and there. And as it makes the other bit of the turn to make one full rotation, it will go there, there. Right, everyone happy with that? The reason why it's not dropping down is because it's a DC generator. So the voltage is always in the same direction. So we end up with that kind of graph here. And obviously the reason why the voltage doesn't swap directions is because we have the split ring commutator. So the split rings ensure the voltage flows the same way. So that is the function of the split rings. It's to ensure the voltage flows the same way. Make sure you look at that graph, guys, because the voltage goes in one direction and it stays in that direction again. Each of them is a half turn. So each of these, this is a half turn. Yeah, so each of these is a half turn. Okay, right, next one then. So that is the DC generator. And obviously, sometimes it's called a dynamo. And now we're going to move on to the AC generator. So here is the AC generator. So the AC generator looks slightly different. They have removed the split ring commutators and they have slip rings. These are continuous rings, guys. And they're attached to the same point of the square coil. So they're attached to the same point of the square coil. As you can see, the two ends of the square coil are each connected to one of the slip rings. Yeah. Each of those slip rings, it's continuous, and they are attached to the carbon brushes now. And they're connected to a voltmeter. Okay, so, and have a look in this diagram here. It's kind of hard for me to draw, but you can see that one of the wires is passing through the, one of the slip rings. It can pass through the slip rings, and it's not affecting it as it goes round. So they can both move together. 
Yeah, they can both move and they're not influencing each other. So therefore, it allows a full rotation. It allows it to rotate. There's no swapping of the split rings here because it's just slip rings. Okay, so the slip rings just move and they cycle together again and again. So there are no more split rings. We only have slip rings now. So what is the difference of having these slip rings versus split rings? So if we have the slip rings, what's going to happen is the voltage can swap direction. So for you guys, I'd say that this, the word slip, always re remember, slip means it can alternate. It can produce AC. So slip rings indicate AC, alternating current. So our graph will look like the following. So let's imagine it once again. We have voltage over here and time over here. And we're going to rotate it round. So once again, we're going to rotate it. So when it makes the first half turn, so there to there, yes, it goes there, half a turn. Then when it makes the next bit, there to there, it's going to now swap direction. Why? Because the slip rings enable the voltage to swap direction. So at each half turn, the voltage will swap direction. Okay. A little bit tricky, loads of keywords here. Lots of kids get confused on the terms of slip rings and split rings, which is fair enough because it looks roughly the same. And also some kids get confused with the DC motor. These are generators, guys. So both of these are generators, they're not DC motors. Right, before we move on, here's a little nice little summary between them. So the DC generator, sometimes it's called a dynamo, guys, for short. If you see that in the book, it's dynamo. It's a split ring and the voltage is always in the same direction, as you can see from our diagram. And if it's the AC generator, it's a slip ring. The voltage will be in both directions. Every half turn, we end up seeing the switch around. OK. Quick recap from the top before we go. Let's go for at the start. We had today's title AC and DC generators. So there are two types of generators. Quick recap. DC means one direction, AC means alternating direction. Scrolling down, the DC generator. We know for the DC generator that when you rotate the coil within a field, we generate a voltage. Because we have a split ring, the voltage is always in the same direction, we end up with the following graph, the voltage never dropping down. Each of those humps equals a half a turn. Half a turn. Then we have the AC generator. For the AC generator, we know that as you rotate the coil within the field, we notice that we now have alternating voltage being produced. And as you can see, every half turn, the voltage swaps direction, right? And that's the reason why the voltage drops below the x-axis. Yeah, everyone happy. And last of all, we did a comparison between DC generators and AC generators. DC, split ring. AC, slip ring. We have the two graphs and the voltage for DC is always in the same direction. The voltage for AC will be in alternating directions. And that's it for another session of Sir Razzle Dazzle Physics. I shall see you next time. Comment below if you have any queries, want me to go through something else. I will do my best to help you guys. Right, make sure you like and subscribe. See you next time. Goodbye.